In this problem, we have a system of equations. And the easiest way to solve most systems is by elimination. So we pick any letter to eliminate. I'm going to pick x because I've got an x by itself. That usually means it'll be easier. So to eliminate x, I need to make sure that I have opposite x's. To do that, I can multiply this whole line by negative 2. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times 2y is minus 4y. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. And let me just rewrite this top line. And now I can see that 2x and minus 2x are opposites. So I'm going to add the entire equations together, and the x's will cancel out. 2x minus 2x is 0. What is 4y minus 4y? 0 again. And what is 4 plus minus 6? That's minus 2. And then simplifying that, we get 0 equals negative 2. And now, how many solutions does this have? How many different letter y's are going to make this true? Well, none. No matter what y is, 0 does not equal negative 2. That's just a fact of math. That never happens. That means there are 0 solutions. If we had gotten something like y equals 2, there would have been one solution. That would be true when y is 2, and that's the only y it works for. That would have had one solution. If we had had something like 3 equals 3, a statement that's true, that's true no matter what y is. y could be anything, so there are infinitely many solutions there. Those are the three sorts of answers you can get to a system of linear equalities like this, a system of linear equations. Problem 17. We need to find a number that's a factor of both of these. And to do that, well, we start by factoring both of them. So if we have x squared minus 6x plus 8, that last number, our 8, is what we need to get two numbers to multiply to be. So 8, that could be 1 times 8, or it could be 2 times 4. Now which of these would add up to give us 6? Well, to get 6, to, well, to get negative 6, we need the 2 and the 4. And we'd need to make, make them both negative. So this factors to be x minus 2, x minus 4. We know that's right because negative 2 times negative 4 gives us the plus 8 at the end. And negative 2 plus negative 4 gives us that minus 6 in the middle. Same idea for this problem here. We need two numbers that will multiply to be negative 12. And that will add up to be, if you've got negative x, that's the same as negative 1x. We need two numbers that add up to be negative 1. But I always start by looking at what's going to multiply to be negative 12. So 12 could be 1 times 12, it could be 2 times 6, it could be 3 times 4, and that's all the possibilities. So which of these could give us a negative 1? Well, that would be 3 and 4. To make it a negative 1, you'd need a negative 4 and a positive 3, which means this expression factors to x plus 3 x minus 4. And now which of these is a factor? And now what's a factor of both of these? Well, x minus 4 is a factor of both of those. And that's your answer, x minus 4. One trick for fractions is that anytime you have a plus or minus in the middle, you can just split it up into two separate fractions. This is the same as this piece over 2x squared plus this piece over its own 2x squared. And from there we can just divide. What is 8 divided by 2? That's 4. What is x to the fifth divided by x squared? Well remember when we divide with exponents we subtract them. If you have 5x's and you divide out two of them, you're left with three of them. 5 minus 2 is 3. The plus symbol will stay right there in the middle. 6 divided by 2 is 3. x to the 4 divided by x to the 2. Well, 4 minus 2 is 2. And that is as simple as that will get. And that's problem 18. Problem 19, we have a rectangular garden with an area of 28 
and where the width is 3 less than the length. So we need to remember our area formula for rectangles. Area is length times width. Now that we've done that, we need to get this to just have one variable in it. Since we know what w is, w is l minus 3, we replace the w with the l minus 3 that it equals. Then we will distribute this l out. l times l is l squared. l times minus 3 is minus 3l. Then to get l by itself, I'm sorry, we don't get l by itself because we have an l squared. If we have l squared and l, that means we're dealing with a quadratic. We need to get everything all on the left side equal to 0. Subtract 28 on both sides. You get l squared minus 3l minus 28 equals 0. And to solve a quadratic, the easiest thing to do is to factor it. So to factor, that means you need two numbers that multiply to be the last piece, that negative 28, and add up to be that middle piece, that negative 3. So what multiplies to be 28? Well, it could be 1 and 28. It's even, so it divides by 2. This could be 2 and 14. And the only other possibility ends up being 4 and 7. And to get minus 3 when you add them together, you would need a negative 7 and a positive 4. So this is L plus 4. L minus 7 is equal to 0. And then we set each of these equal to 0 on their own. L plus 4 equals 0. You subtract 4, you get that L has to equal negative 4. If L minus 7 equals 0, you add 7. And you have to get that L is positive 7. Now this is a word problem. We're talking about the length of a garden. Can your garden be negative 4 feet wide? No, it can't. That doesn't make sense. So our garden has to be 7 feet long. And if we are 7 feet long, width is 3 less than that. Our width is 4. So if our width is 4 and our length is 7, what's our perimeter? How, far, how long would you have to go to walk around the entire rectangle? Our perimeter is 2 times length plus 2 times w. And then from there, we simply plug in the length and the width that we just found. L is 7, w is 4, and work that out. 2 times 7 gives you 14, 2 times 4 gives you 8, and adding those gives you your perimeter of 22 feet. On just about any problem that uses rate and seems at all complicated, you want to make a table like this. On top you write distance equals rate times time. And you make a new row for everything you talk about. So here we talked about Thursday and about Friday. And then we need to start filling this in. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the rate on Friday. So I'll put an x in this box. x is what I'm looking for. And then what do we know? We know that on Friday, we spent four hours working on the problems. On Thursday, we spent a total of five hours working on the problems. And then our rate on Thursday, they told us we would call that p, p problems per hour. And then on Thursday, our distance, well, distance is rate times time. So p times 5, we'd had a distance of 5p. And then they also told us that we had the same total number of problems done on Thursday and Friday. So this needs to still be 5p down there. And then from here, we'll turn this second line into an equation. 5p equals x times 4. Remember what we're looking for is x. We want x by itself. So to get rid of this times 4, we divide by 4. And we get x equals 5p over 4, and that is the answer. Our rate is 5 fourths p. This problem, the math isn't very difficult, but setting it up will be a lot easier if you make this kind of table so you can keep track of all your distances and rates and times. Trying to do it without some sort of system is very difficult to think it through in your head.